All right, this first video or this video, Kinematics 3, is about free fall. And free fall for us is uh, dropping objects from some height and basically they free fall toward the ground or throwing objects straight up into the air and then coming uh, straight back down. Uh, so basically in free fall, the big thing we're focused on is the idea that gravity is the only thing acting on the object. It, it accelerates only because of gravity. If we throw a ball up in the air, the only reason it has any acceleration whatsoever is because gravity is pulling on the object. And acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared down. Uh, and when we say down, down really means toward the center of the Earth. Now, any, any object that's in the air, gravity always acts on these objects. Always. And so it's our, that will be our absolute that we have to deal with in physics. When I say we don't deal with absolutes, this will be one of them. Um, but in this class, we're going to try to avoid using 9.8 to always have decimal numbers. We're going to use uh, gravity, acceleration due to gravity being 10 meters per second squared. Uh, we'll be off by 2%, uh, but it, it'll be able to go quicker through our math, um, on AP exams, you get a multiple choice question, and you get within two percentage points of an answer, uh, it'll be the answer. You'll be able to find it very, very quickly. Uh, so we want to make sure we get used to being able to calculate without a calculator or with it, but be able to do it quickly with, easy, with whole numbers. Um, but the one thing we want to do is we want to talk about the misconception of free-falling objects. So let's say we throw a ball straight up and it comes straight back down and the object at the top of the motion is momentarily at rest and the biggest issue is most people seem to think that acceleration equals zero at the top and that is false the object is always being acted on by gravity always acts on by gravity so if you throw a ball into the air when it goes up in the air and stops the acceleration is still 10, point, or 10 meters per second squared down or 9.8 meters per second squared down or toward the center of the earth and the acceleration is, has a value. The object does stop but it has velocity. So that is a false statement. It's a, it's a common misconception that it has zero acceleration at the top. It's still being pulled down by gravity which is why it begins to come down on the other side of the parabola. So acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. If acceleration was zero at, zero at the top, then the object's speed and velocity would no longer change. So if velocity equals zero, then and this, basically, if you were to hit a baseball up in the air and gravity, act, gravity didn't act on it, and when it reached the top of its motion, it didn't have any velocity or any speed, and gravity and acceleration was zero, the ball would just hang there. So nobody could catch the fly ball. The ball would never clear the fence. It would just sit out in the middle of the air. So acceleration being zero would not work. So if acceleration is zero, then the object's speed and velocity are no longer changing. That means velocity is zero but the acceleration is still gravity and it's still 10 meters per second squared down. So let's pretend we're going to throw a ball straight up and it comes straight back down, but what we're going to do, as you can see here, I drew it straight up and straight back down, but then I spread it out so you can see a little bit better. And the initial velocity here we're going to use is 20 meters per second up. And we have a few questions we want answered that are going to occur right there before the object hits the ground. And that question we want answered is how long is that ball in the air? And we're going to use the guess method to figure this out. So we have our initial velocity is 20 meters per second up, and our acceleration is 10 meters per second squared down. And anytime you have differing vectors, so the direction is of both of these things, the velocity and the acceleration, are different. They disagree with each other. Uh, we have to assign a negative somewhere. So we ha must have a negative somewhere, and we're going to assign that to the gravity because it's acting down, which I'll to use down as a consistent negative direction. And then we have, when it reaches the bottom, 
that the change in displacement in the y direction, so it's going to go up in the air and come back down, that it's going to be zero. So it ended up right where it started. Uh, so the displacement is zero. And what we're looking for is time, because that's when we want to know how long it was in the air. So our equation will be changing y equals v naught t plus one half at squared. And since change in y equals zero, we can get rid of that and cancel it, and then move v naught t to both sides. So our equation should look like this where negative v naught t equals one-half at squared. So now we need to simplify it even further, solve for time. And since we have time on both sides, the t will cancel the square on the other side, and we're left with negative v naught equals one-half at. We need to divide by a and multiply by 2, and we end up with negative 2 v naught over a equals t. And then we can solve it by plugging in our variables, and we should know with time equals four seconds. And that, that is a good process of the guess method, and now that we've thrown the ball straight up in the air and it's come straight back down, it is now four seconds later. Uh, but the second question we would want answered is how fast is the object moving right before hitting the ground? So the initial velocity was 20 meters per second up. Gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared, and it's down. Uh, the change in y is still 0 meters, and so now our unknown is final velocity. So using our equations, we find out that v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a change in y in this case, because we're going vertical, is our equation. And to simplify it, all we really have to do is get rid of the change in y. Anything that's multiplied it becomes 0, and now we have... Uh, v squared equals v naught squared, and to get rid of a square, we just square root it. And at that point, we have v equals plus or minus v naught. And so v equals plus or minus v naught, plug in our numbers, v equals 20 meters per second up. I'm sorry, v naught is 20 meters per second up. So if it's going up on one side, and on the other side it should be coming down, uh, we should be able to tell what the answer is going to be. Since it's going to be plus or minus, V equals plus or minus V naught. Well, if V naught is positive because it's going up, then V should be negative because it's going down. And so that makes our answer very simple. It's negative 20 meters per second. Uh, now we're going to do questions 3 and 4. Um, we want to know how long the object will take to get to the top. And we also want to know how high it goes into the air or how far up to the top. So using our guess method, initial velocity is 20 meters per second up, acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared down, uh, velocity is 0 meters per second. At the top, now we got that from what we were talking about earlier, that at the top the ball, the object is momentarily at rest. Its velocity is 0, but it's still being accelerated toward the center of the earth because of gravity. And we're looking for time. So the equation we're using is V equals V naught plus AT. Rearrange the equation for time by subtracting V naught from both sides and then divide by A. And we'll get T equals the change in velocity over acceleration. Plug in our numbers, 0 minus 20 over negative 10, and we should get 2 seconds. So now let's solve the next part is how far to the top. Using our givens that we have, we're now going to do this in a different color. So we need to have time is 2 seconds, and we need to find the change in y. So using a new equation, change in y equals v i t plus 1, or v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. It's already solved for displacement, so we didn't have to simplify it. So now we can just go right into plugging in our numbers. Plug in 20 meters per second, 2 seconds plus one-half, negative 10 meters per second squared, and then two seconds squared for the t. And we have 40 plus negative 20. And therefore, the object goes up 20 meters in the air. So, you know, we're dropping objects or throwing objects straight up in the air. Uh, we, we basically dealt with throwing one up in the air because that has the most issues uh, with having mistakes and common misconceptions. 
The other thing we'll do is have objects that we are dropping. And the best example I can give you I'm draw, I have drawn here is that we're going to drop objects from a cliff. And when we drop them from a cliff, or if we're standing there dropping them from our head height or from the ceiling or something along those lines, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero because we're holding it. And then gravity is going to pull it down. So gravity is 10 meters per second squared down. And then we're going to have some displacement that it's going to travel in the y direction. Uh, and those should be several, we should have those three givens. If we don't have those givens, they'll give us time. And we'll solve things for time. We'll find the acceleration, or not the acceleration. We'll find the final velocity just before it hits the ground. Uh, it, it's basically very similar to the free fall questions without it going up and coming back down. They're actually a little bit simpler because all the vectors agree and are going one direction. Uh, so we'll do a lot of practice with, in, with this in class next time. And uh, I look forward to doing that with you guys.